Hello, YouTube. Um, so this is the second in a series of um, reviews for white Agricole rums. And today uh, we're looking at uh, Rum GM, or if you're American like I am, uh, Rum JM Blanc, uh, bottled at 100 proof. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about these guys in a minute, but uh, you may notice that I've uh, I've got my glass already poured here, and I have a little uh, top on it already. This is uh, actually from a Ben Romak tube. And that's because this is actually quite um, a subtle um, spirit, and I wanted to give it a, a chance to kind of breathe a little bit before I, I, I dig in. So, um, like I said, this is um, uh, a little bit more expensive than the Duquesne um, from last time. Uh, I think this is like 32, 33 bucks in the Chicago area. And it comes in a, in a 750 instead of a liter. So um, just more pricey overall. But uh, we can see what we get from that. Um, okay. So uh, I wouldn't call this sexy, but it's more sexy than, than the Duquesne was. Um, okay, so first off, uh, you're getting a little bit of that grapefruity thing again, but it's actually um, very absinthe. Um, there's a kind of aniseed fennel note in there, which is which I love. Um, lemon, but it's it's like a lemon peel, almost like smoked lemon peel. Um, oh, cane juice in the background there, but also yeah, some tea notes, um, oolong tea, um, like a metallic thing, uh, like a like rust almost, um, and uh, some some sort of dried grass in there as well. And on the palate, uh, hmm. Very pretty, very aromatic, um, actually. And again, very subtle. Uh, I, I do recommend the top thing, um, if you're gonna, if you're gonna drink this. So, uh, yeah, sort of licorice-y, um, absinthe element in the, again there, the, the sort of anise uh, element to this. But even, this is gonna sound weird, even a little like, like, um, Isla malt in there, like not the, you know, not the the barley element, not the the, the malt element itself, but it's almost the peat without the peat, if I can put it that way. It's it's uh, almost a little like like our bed ten in there, minus minus sort of what makes it malt whiskey, if I can put it that way. Um, Okay, much more traditionally grassy than the Duquesne was. Sort of fresh grass mixed with um, almost like if you set some dried grass on fire, like burned grass note, um, a little olive, um, some some fresh mint, like you just, uh, you have your little garden and you pick some mint out. Um, this is this is a wonderfully delicate run and and sort of very aromatic and um, um, light uh, in in character. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is oh I'm missing my um, my my eyedropper again, but I'm just going to add the tiniest little bit. It's at a hundred. It's at a hundred uh, proof, so I can do this tiny little bit. And I'm going to put a top on it and tell you a little bit. Actually, hold on. No, I wasn't. I was wrong. There's actually a beet element in there. You know, like like um, root vegetable, sort of earthy, but kind of um, uh, but kind of a little bit sweet at the same time. And it, 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 it's that element of, of sort of beatness that um, 
inspired me to sort of think of a story of like why uh, Agricole rum is the way it is. Like, why do they distill pure cane juice rather than molasses like everywhere else sort of in the English colonies? And the answer really has to do with beets and Napoleon. Um, so uh, while I wait, wait for this thing to, to sort of settle down uh, with a little bit of water in it, um, this is a fun story to tell. So um, the, the French colonies were distilling molasses uh, for their rum as normal and sort of shipping sugar off to, to France as normal. The problem was um, there was a, France was in one of those sort of endless wars with England uh, that they always got into um, at the beginning of the 19th century. And uh, uh, France was blockaded, so they couldn't actually get their sugar in from the colonies. And sugar was actually kind of a luxury good. Everyone was using it, but it was, it was like a, you know, sort of like the iPhone of the time. Um, um, luxury good, but you know, kind of, kind of a pain, kind of expensive, kind of a pain in the ass to get because you had to get it from the colonies, and they couldn't get it because you know the the, the English were, you know, keeping the ships from coming in, so uh, France wasn't getting sugar. Now, uh, there was a, a crazy guy over in Prussia. Um, wait, sorry, Prussia this way. Um, who had been breeding beets um, to produce sucrose. So basically table sugar um, uh, without needing to use um, um, cane. And uh, this came to the attention of Napoleon. And they had some guys come over and basically make a couple of loaves of bread using sugar beets. Um, and Napoleon was, was so happy about this that he basically ordered sugar beets to be planted throughout uh, throughout France and mills built for the purpose of, of harvesting, this, harvesting the stuff. And I think still to this day, something like uh, 20, 30 percent of, of sugar production, um, table sugar production, comes from beets uh, rather than cane. So this this has a long history. And, and this this sort of put the uh, the sugar producers in the French colonies in, into a, a lot of trouble because like suddenly they're sitting on all this like sugar cane, which is really expensive uh, over in, in France. Um, and they can't compete with the, the beet folks. Um, so what do they do with their product? They, uh, as, as uh, enterprising um, folks, they made booze, booze out of it, of course. And uh, whence um, Agricole Rum. Um, I hope you enjoyed that story. Let's go back to um, the Rum GM, um, having put a little bit of water into it. Yeah, this actually gets just huge. It's 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 quiet to start out with, but if you add a little bit of water to it, give it some time, it just gets very very aromatic. It's sort of the leading note is actually weirdly enough, like crushed children's medicine. Like if you took a bunch of like children's cough medicine pills or vitamins or something and just crushed them all in your hand and gave that a whiff, it's sort of that that sort of fake fruity medicinal smell mixed with there's, a, there's some floral elements in there which are hard to pin down um more grass more of that sort of dried grass element lemon peel almost a little like a vin vinegar note um I don't know, maybe rice vinegar um and uh lychee fruit i mentioned that before in the in the in the duquesne review This is gorgeous. Um, okay, and on the on the palette, mm -hmm. okay. So that sort of Isla Ardbeggy note kind of goes away with with a little bit of water, but the fennel and the the anise come right out. Um, so it's like a, um, do you know like like supermarket? rye bread, which isn't really rye bread, but they throw like tons of, of caraway seed in it to kind of confuse you. Um, so it's more like caraway bread. This has that sort of caraway seed aspect to it. Apple, more like like almost unripe apple, like, like very starchy apples. The starch doesn't really turn to sugar yet. Um, like almost a 
like a savory note in there, like um. Hmm. Best I can do is something like, like something like fish sauce, but not as fishy as actual fish sauce, and um, like artichoke hearts. You know the stuff that the ones that come in the oil and the, and the little jars, um, and a lemon peel. Um, that, not, not le like lemon oil. Um, you know those those little expensive aromatic containers that cost like 20 bucks each um, um just beautiful this is um um i mean it's, it's very much an eau de vie of, of cane if i can put it that way so it's not going to be up a lot of people's alley but i mean this is much more approachable than something like the duquesne was this is um mm. yeah this is like a to the extent that, it, that you can have a session rum, rum agricole, this is that. This is just very, it's light and, and beautiful, but just very, very drinkable, Once, especially once you add a little bit of water to it. So I'm going to give this um, 87 out of 100. Um, beautiful. Uh, uh, the the, the uh, Most of the, G, the rum uh, GM range is, is really good. Um, this, I think, was bottled in 2018, but uh, so far as I know, like, they never had a bad batch. Um, highly recommended. A little bit expensive, but definitely worth trying. Um, if you're an Absinthe fan, um, the Anise note in, in here is, is you're going to love it. Um, yeah. So thanks for watching, and cheers.